Bicore i5-2500, part of the legendary lineup of CPUs from the LGA1155 socket, is now a whole 11 years old and since it had been released, a lot of things have changed. And believe it or not, even the Intel stock cooler has been changed, not only by color. So after all these changes, someone could be wondering if this aging quad core could put up a great fight against some of the most demanding titles of today, or is it just getting too much to handle for this old CPU? The i5-2500 is arguably one of the most popular CPUs of the last decade, and many people use it till this day. So being such a popular CPU, and going down in price day by day, someone could be wondering if you can get away with playing modern titles on it. And that's exactly what we're going to find out today. This chip is based on a 32 nanometer process with 4 cores and 4 threads, clocked at 3.3 GHz with no real overclocking potential. But that has of course been left to the K variant of the CPU. As for the GPU to accompany the CPU, I will be using the RX570. Arguably not ideal for such testing, as it is lacking performance-wise, but still good enough for 1080p gaming, and it is something that someone would realistically pair with such a kind of a CPU. And it is the strongest GPU I have, so I guess it will do the job. So now, without wasting any more time, let's see what this CPU can offer. First up, we have Cinebench R20, and the i5 scored a very nice 831 points, which puts it 300 points above an i3 from the same generation, and also not really being far away from an i5-3550. So all in all, very nice results. A nice warm-up session for almost any CPU is Dirt Rally 2, and this i5-2500 is no exception to that essentially providing the same results as it does on any decently capable CPU paired with the RX570. AC Valhalla is known to be a CPU demanding title, which can be seen by the CPU usage never really dropping under 50%, but despite that, the CPU handles the game nicely, with decent averages and a few stutters here and there. But overall, it's doing reasonably well. Doom Eternal is another game with this i5 doesn't have many problems, but considering that the game is more GPU bound, it isn't a big surprise. That doesn't make the i5's performance much less impressive so far, showing that it can be considered as good enough even for recent titles. Hitman 3 just confirms the fact that the CPU is still quite capable after all these years. Even while using the maximum settings, the CPU doesn't drop a frame. The Total War series always stressed out even the most capable CPUs, but the i5-2500 runs Total War Troy without problem. Although relatively high CPU usage can be spotted here, but that's something to expect in such a CPU intensive title. It can't all be good after all, as he left the worst results for the end. We can see that in the Mafia remake, the CPU is almost at 100% all of the time, and although the frame rate is decent, it is something to keep in mind, showing us that as we move on, games will eventually get too much to handle for this CPU, and also being an indicator that CPUs with 4 cores and 4 threads can be pushed to their limits with the newer generation of games. Speaking of the newer generation of games, Cyberpunk 2077 doesn't really play the best on this CPU, providing decent average frame rates, but from time to time, you can experience freezes and stutters, something that doesn't happen while playing on an 11th gen i5 for example. <laughs> 
One thing worth mentioning about the benchmarks is the relatively high temperatures of the CPU. Mostly down to the very weak LGA-1200 cooler, which isn't really the best for anything more than an i3 at most. So although the temperatures weren't extremely high, there were cases like the Mafia remake where 80 degrees certainly isn't a pleasant number. So it is really advisable to get an aftermarket cooler for anything more than an i3. The i5-2500 can still offer decent performance as we saw during the benchmarks, which is good to see considering the age of the CPU. So seems like Intel have outdone themselves with these CPUs, as the LGA-1155 socket lives on for more than a decade and has been a recommendation for budget gamers for years after it was released. So this concludes a very successful test of one of the most popular CPUs from the last decade, and I believe that with good cooling and decay variant of the CPU, can get an even better experience by doing some overclocking. But even without that, this is exceptional performance for a $20 CPU. And I believe that the 1155 socket CPUs will live on for a couple of more years, and will provide a lot of fun to budget-oriented gamers.